Good morning friends. Uh, this is day two of the cooking for Christmas. Today I'm going to make most of my salads and some cold meats that can be just warmed up later on because Christmas is in like three days. Um, and a thing called piradzini, which is kind of like similar to Polish pierogi, uh, but it just like my family's twist on it and we have had them every Christmas so yay recipes come and hang out with me if you want I'm just gonna continue cooking <laughs> Today we're gonna start with piradzini because they need to rise and that means that I will need to keep them in a warm place for a couple of hours and then they will be ready to come out the first time I'll knead them and then they will go back in again while we wait for the milk to Boil, warm up, not boil. Gonna have 100 grams of butter melted. our bowl and we're gonna start assembling this recipe so it can go and rise because it will take a couple of hours the milk's warmed up it's not really like boiling hot it's just lukewarm And then I'm going to use some to activate my yeast. Here's my melted butter. That just goes in. And then now we're just going to activate the yeast. And I'm thinking maybe three teaspoons. And then some sugar. Now we just wait and see what happens. Maybe I should have started with this first because activating the yeast will take some time and then I could have started with putting the flour in. Oh, okay. It's fine. It's fine. We'll learn. And there's no set amount of flour, you just keep adding it in to like... I think it's starting to activate so once it's activated I'm just gonna pour it in add a little bit more flour put a towel over it and put it in my airing cupboard where the boiler is and it's warm and then 
gentle rise. <laughs> because if you add too much flour you can always add a little bit more extra milk to thin it out you can never actually go wrong with it it's almost the right consistency because when we will bring it out the second time we will add extra flour so it just bounces off your hands Just gonna sprinkle the top. This is the right consistency. It's sticky and it's wet ish, but it kind of holds its shape. Sprinkle some flour on top so it doesn't stick to the towel. And then it's ready to go to rest. When using a towel, just have like a plain one instead of those fluffy ones. Fluffy ones are kind of yeah, if it gets stuck, it's a lot harder to get it off and then you get sometimes even like a little fluff in the dough, which is not okay. So this is going to my iron cupboard now. While the dough is rising, I will start on Russell's. I'm going to be cooking the recipe that I knew as a child. My mum's recipe, the one we cooked as a, together when I was small has changed now and she's adapting it and she has added some carrots in it I don't like it I'm using the old one I'm just letting you know that there's like so many different variations of it um, yeah but it's very tasty so the base is potatoes so we will need to boil these and we will need to boil some eggs then it has onions ham Pickled gherkins, but it needs to be a sweet pickle. So I buy this in a Polish shop because I can't get it anywhere in the UK. And then conserved peas, like I don't know how you like canned peas, basically. Uh, as a sauce, you use 50 50 with mayo and sour cream. So, for example, if you use three spoons of mayo, you would use three spoons of sour cream, add some mustard, about a teaspoon, some black pepper, salt, and then it's ready. And you can go on top of it, you mix it all up. And it's usually the best next day because the tastes have marinated together, like, like familiarized, married, weird but it's very very tasty okay, I'm gonna put some potatoes to boil and some eggs they need to be cold when you put them in a salad they can't be hot oh, my potatoes are growing that's good enough still good so we will need to cool them down I have found it that the easiest way is to put them in the outside because it's quite cold and they're usually cold within half an hour. While that's boiling, I'm gonna boil some red beetroot as well, because that is the beetroot salad that I'm gonna make. That was the only way how my mom got us, me and my sister to eat beetroot. It's sweet gherkins again, there's a pattern. Sweet pickled gherkins, Half and half, 50-50 with beetroot plus sour cream and it tastes seriously amazing, especially on the second day. So good. I have 
put everything to boil. Just done that. While it's boiling, we can start chopping the other ingredients. So ham, gherkins, these need to go in straight off, just drained, and the onion can go in as well. And then you just chop it in um, cubes of about like three by three or four by four millimeters. I can't deal with onions. I always cry really, really bad. Now the peas. I just need to drain them. And in they go. Potatoes are ready now. I just need to put them on the plate and then outside so they can cool once they're cold we can add them to russels and then we can continue on eggs are done and ready to go into the salad of course we need to shell them gonna cut them. Got the issues with fresh boiled egg and a bit older boiled egg so it's a lot harder to peel them let's make the sauce for the russels while we wait for potatoes to cool down so it's 50 50 sour cream and mayo with some mustard pepper and salt by taste it depends how you like it <laughs>
I just chopped six onions and my eyes are feeling it. I did it outside because I just I can't cope with onions inside. I literally can't see. I'm crying that bad. Uh, I don't know. My eyes are always like that. But the potatoes are cold now. So we just need to peel them. And then they go into the kettle. I find it easier to make it in, mix it in the kettle. I find it like there's more room. The edges are not too rounded, so it doesn't spray out when, when you're mixing it. Now we just chop them like this. Now we just mix it all together, add the sauce, and it's done. Might not look like the most appealing thing ever, but the taste is amazing. It's one of the best things I have ever eaten. While we wait for the dough to rise, I'm going to make the filling for Pirazini. It's basically two thirds meat, one third onions chopped finely, salt, pepper, and that's basically it. But it needs to cool down before we can fill it in. And I like to cool it down as well because then it's easier to handle. All the fat has solidified and like just fallen down. You can like strain it So we have a colander and a bowl. I'm just gonna transfer it over because it's it's ready, but it has like a lot of liquid underneath. I just want 
went upstairs and grabbed our dough. As you can see, it's risen really well. Now it needs to be kneaded first time. I think that's how you say it. Just need to wash my hands. And then it will need to go back in a bowl upstairs um, in a warm place and be done again. Oh no, my rings. It looks super good. So, so good. I have one of these things. <laughs> works really well on this bowl. Oh, wow. So you shouldn't make this dough too tough. It needs to be soft and a little bit sticky um, when it starts to pull the dough off of your fingers and it gets stuck inside of the dough it's ready to go back up and then it means yeah it's ready so we're gonna make it rest again just gonna sprinkle some flour in there It's easier to get out. Come on, don't, don't, don't stick to the table. <clears throat> and then sprinkle flour on top a little bit so it doesn't get stuck to the table, to the towel. Okay, and now it's ready to go and rise again. Once it's risen, we can start baking with it and it's ready. <clears throat> if you leave it too long, it will collapse on itself. I am going to put the gloves on for this one. Because no matter how much I like the salad, I do not enjoy having red hands. And the beetroot stains your hands for a couple of days. I'm just going to weigh each of them, like the gherkins and the beetroot, like 50-50 because I have found that that's the easiest way how to balance it otherwise you have it too sweet or too sour and it never ends up well because you go like oh just one more gherkin and then it's too sour again I have peeled all of the beetroot and I'm gonna weigh exact same amount of gherkins I'm going to use my big bowl because I just don't want it splashing anywhere and now we're great Now we have it all together, both. I'm just gonna add a couple of spoonfuls of sour cream and see how it goes. never had like a name for this salad they just called it the red salad I'm 
I'm just gonna continue on. Red beetroot salad. We're back with the second lot, as you can see. It's nice and well, all rounded now. And it's risen and it hasn't collapsed yet, so that's great. I have started the oven. My meat filling is here. I'm just gonna jump in, roll it out, put some meat in there, roll it over and then cut it out. We usually cut it cut it out with um Where's my cup? With a cup. Actually I'm gonna use one of these forms that I used for cookies. And a spoon. I need my rolling pin. And we're ready to start. See it collapse. And it's gone. And that's how it looks. So you fold it over. Okay. I think I need a smaller shape because the corners are really empty. There's a lot of dough and not much anything else. Oh no, this one's breaking. I'll just do it that way. And then we do another egg wash while they're still hot. 
so it cooks and they become super shiny my oven is enough with about 12 minutes it must be a bit hotter than normal and then the next one's gonna go in rinse and repeat I need to work on my closing skills because these ones have opened some of them are looking like really good and some of them are like I'm gonna eat your face off. Rah, 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 rah. They need to completely cool. I have prepared like a basket with towels in there. So you just drop them in and they will cool down on their own and it keeps them nice and moist. It doesn't dry them out so much. Last one done and we are left with a little bit of dough. What we usually do is we roll it out, I love me in my home, and we fill it with jam and then do a Swiss roll thing. I think I'm going to do that. I have a better idea. I'm just going to do sugar and sprinkle it in, roll it up cut it in pieces and that will be done. I'm going to pinch the bottom so the melted sugar doesn't flow out. And when I sit them down, it kind of looks like little roses. Our last pan is in, everything's clean, 
everything is ready for it to come out while I wait I was thinking that I'm just gonna have a cup of tea uh, I have deserved it I've been on my feet for six hours taking only six hours is fine I'm gonna have elderflower tea I foraged this in the spring I'm just gonna strain it and enjoy a marvelous cup of tea So it's been a long day, I've been on my feet all the time, but I have enjoyed it a lot. This is my third video. <laughs> I have learned so much making them and I'm very happy about it. Thank you everyone for sticking around and hanging out with me today. Have a lovely Christmas. Bye bye.